Theme is elusive. In a movie, you can't point to a particular scene and say, that's the underlying theme. Nor can you finish a book and confidently list out the various themes it discussed. When you watch a movie like Captain America's Civil War, it's exceedingly simple to discuss the epic airport fight scene, or point to a character like Spider-Man or Iron Man and say, that's him. But what about theme? Can you identify it? Does it even exist? More importantly, can it help improve your story? In today's video, we find out. We'll start off with a high level definition of theme, which in essence, is what connects your story to real life. It can be a simple message or complex idea. However, the most important part is that it always relate back to the experience of being human. Let's explore this further by looking at Disney's Beauty and the Beast, a story jam-packed with theme, the most evident of which is the theme of appearances. The movie opens with showing us just how obsessed the town is with looks, with seemingly no one caring about personality or intelligence. Belle is the most beautiful girl in the village. That makes her the best. Belle is the only person who pushes against this idea. No. And her belief is put to the test when she comes face to face with the beast. Through learning how he thinks and his past, his passion for reading and traveling, she eventually falls in love with him, never once bringing up his appearance or feeling it a barrier to fully loving him. This is an example of a rise theme, one that starts off positive and gradually builds throughout the story. For the audience, it's no surprise that she falls in love with the beast, but more a happy expectation. The next theme discussed is the theme of sacrifice. This is shown quarterway through the movie, when Belle so easily trades places with her father in prison. There isn't even a moment's hesitation to her action, showing the audience what true sacrifice looks like. He's my father. On the other end of this, we're shown the beast, and how he refuses to make even the tiniest of sacrifices. He treats the castle residents like prisoners, locks Belle up in a room, and even as his affection for her grows, he still can't let her leave. The true message behind this theme, however, is shown right at the end, when the beast learns that love means caring for another's happiness more than your own. He lets Belle go, and in a climax scene, makes the biggest sacrifice fall, giving up his own life. This type of theme is called a rebound, when events move more and more towards the negative side of things, before a stark realization switches it upward. Rebounds are definitely my favorite type of theme, because showing the character learning and growing is by far the hardest development to achieve. Lastly, we have the theme of identity, which is actually a lot more subtle and interwoven to the previous two themes. We first open with Belle, who has a sure sense of her identity, but lives in a place that doesn't accept it. Then, we move on to the Beast, who has given up his true identity and embraced an almost animalistic one. And finally, we have the Castle Residents, who are struggling to find their own identity, sure it's gone forever. The messages we learn at the end, however, is that identity is defined by interactions and relationships with people, not the physical form we're in. In Belle's case, she learns to stand up to the village and proudly declare her own views. For the beast, he learns to be human, even while being in an animal's body. And the castle residents, they learn to work together and enjoy life for what it is, despite being constrained to living as an object. This type of theme is called a reversal, and should usually tie into your first two themes. This is because the message is so subtle and unannounced that it usually relies on the other two themes to get parts of the idea out. Now that we've discussed the different types of themes and how they're structured, the next question becomes, how do you develop your own themes in your own story? Well, the model I like to think about is the trio of themes. Three is usually the ideal number of themes you should develop, with any greater being unmanageable and any less lacking substance. You want to pick a main theme to define the story, an auxiliary one in a different stream, and a third theme that links the two together. What might help you keep track of each theme's development is assigning each one to a particular character. For example, the theme of appearance is developed through Belle, sacrifice through the beast, and identity through the castle residence. As each character grows and arcs, you can trace the associated theme's development over it so the story advances at the same pace. Following the structure for rises, rebounds, and reversals helps as well. 
And what you might notice is that the greatest change often occurs at the first and second plot points, as well as the midpoint. For more about these important points, check out my first video on story structure, linked in the description. And so that concludes our exploration of theme, and if developed effectively, should allow you to create a memorable, intriguing, thought-provoking story. Remember to think about theme constantly and build it alongside your story structure and character development. Most people write out their entire novel or screenplay, hoping for theme to emerge naturally, but it almost never will. You want your theme to be intentional and controlled, just like your story structure and character development. When writing theme, keep only one thing in mind. It needs to relate to being human. Think about it. Beauty and the Beast is a story about animal transformations and inanimate objects talking. And yet, it relates so closely to our own lives. We can relate to feeling inadequate in our own bodies, or judging people based on their appearances, or even having a hard time letting go of the people we love. Theme is a precious message that you get to share, a technique as old as time. If done right, theme is what gets you published or eventually on the big screen. Nowadays, most novels and movies lack theme entirely, so why not get a head start and stand out from the crowd? Hey guys, thanks for watching this fourth episode of Story Study. In the next video, we'll talk about conflict and what better story to study than Captain America Civil War. Have a great day, and don't forget to check out more at vancebasilio.com.